How you been? What's, what's it like being home? It's been awesome. I've uh, got back yesterday and was able to see a bunch of friends and family and had a nice, warm, welcome little, I don't know, a little welcome thing here on the street. And it was, it was awesome. It was really fun. What was it like seeing all your friends and family and community? It was, it was really fun. I hadn't seen them for almost two years. I only, uh, a year and nine months to be more exact, but uh, I hadn't seen them for a super long time. So like all the little ones, they had grown up a bunch and um, I was just really excited to see them after it being so long. It's quite a turnout. A lot of people there. You know, flags. You know, they were running around. It was like a little, you know, uh, caravan of, of police cars, and you coming through. Describe to me what you were feeling at that moment that you drove into your neighborhood. Um, I was a little bit embarrassed <laughs> about the little police escort, but uh, it was it was fun, and I was excited to see everyone, and um, and I just kind of felt I, I felt back at home, just back with all my family and friends. After a year and nine months, as you said, you know, and being in that airport when that happened, I mean, it must be a relief. It's got to be a relief for you. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are the extents of your injuries? How, how are you dealing with that right now? So the extents of my injuries are, at, at first I was burnt on both hands, but now my, the right hand is pretty, um, it's healed up quite a bunch, and now it's just the left hand that still has a good amount of healing to do. And then I had shrapnel in my legs from the waist down, mostly knee down. Um, and when I was still in Brussels, they took out a bit of the shrapnel, most of it. Well, a few pieces, but there's still about 25 pieces that are just kind of floating around in there. But uh, the doctor said that we'll just leave them in there and they're not going to cause any harm. And they might even just kind of come out over time. Um, then I also was burnt on my head, but uh, that's, it was really light burns, and so that's healed up for the most part. Just a little bit on the ears left, um, and that will only take a few more days, probably. I mean, compared to others, do you feel that you're pretty lucky? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm very blessed. I was very luck lucky. Um, compared to others, there was some really bad injuries. Um, even me and my companion, as we were sitting there right outside the airport, we saw people around us who were, they were really badly injured. And uh, I felt really blessed. I felt really lucky to, to have gotten out with such little damage and that I'll be able to make a full recovery. Yeah. Talk to me about what, what that was like. The, the, I don't even know if you can remember some of this stuff. You mm -hmm. may, you may not. Just moments before, the explosion, or even moments after. Describe to me what you do remember. Okay. And, and I don't know. I mean, for a lot of people, they don't know what that's like. Tell me what it, what it was like. Yeah. I remember the experience really, really well. Um, so we had, my companion and I, we were here to drop off a sister missionary who was going to fly over to the MTC. And we had come into the airport, and we had been standing in a check-in line for less than a minute. And... Uh, the explosion went off, and all I remember from the explosion was my vision went bright orange and then black, and uh, I was on the ground, and I think after less than 30 seconds, I came to, and my ears were ringing super badly, and I opened my eyes, and so I, I got up, and I realized kind of what was going on. I put the pieces together. I saw there was lots of debris, lots of smoke. Um, there was a few fires, and there are people running out of the building. There are people that are laying on the ground, and it, it was pretty scary. Um, but I, I got up and I I was looking for my companions, for the other missionaries around me, and I, I couldn't find them anywhere. And so I exited the building, and right as I came out of the doors. I saw my companion, Elder Wells, and he was, there was a woman who was helping him, and he had a bad, a bad cut in his foot. He was bleeding super badly, and so I came over to him, and we were talking, and um, I asked if he had seen the other missionaries, and he said that he had seen the sister that we were dropping off, but he hadn't seen the, um, the senior missionary. 
and he said that the sister didn't have super bad injuries. He said that she had had minor burns, kind of similar to mine, is what he told me. And it was then that I realized that I had been injured, and I looked at my hands, and I felt the burns on my face. And I didn't know, my, I, didn't know I had shrapnel in my legs. I just, my legs felt super sore. Did you just, did you think it was just adrenaline? Yeah, I think I had just a bunch of adrenaline probably 15 minutes after the attack to where I could walk around and I was walking from Elder Wells and I was kind of looking around for the senior missionary and I'd found him later and I spent some time with him and um, but by the time I'd come back to my companion um, the adrenaline and the shock had worn off a little bit to where my legs were just killing me and I couldn't walk anymore. So what's the <clears throat> what's the recovery process been like? I mean, have, have, you, have you been in constant pain? Or are you feeling a lot better now? I mean, what, what are doctors saying right now? Um, since I got to the hospital in Brussels, um, the re recovery process has gone super well. The doctors have been awesome. Um, we've had so much support from family members, from friends, so many prayers. Uh, and it hasn't been super painful. I, uh, I've had to go through a, a couple little surgeries, um, getting the bandages changed isn't the most pleasant thing, but um, it, it's not too painful. And the doctors and the hospitals have just been so awesome that it's been, it's been as comfortable as, as possible. You said you still have some shrapnel, shrapnel in your leg. I mean, can you, as you walk, can you feel anything? I mean, is it? Um, sometimes it feels a little bit sore still. I actually, there's a piece of shrapnel in the back of my head. And uh, you can, if you feel that, there's a little bump where uh, and you can see like the little tiny hole where it went in but um it's just it's super shallow and it'll probably come o out over time wow with all that being said obviously this is a big news story um mm -hmm. big event that happened you know especially involving you guys and what's it been like being in the the the, the spotlight i guess that the media's eye you know the eye of the world really the one of being one of the one, one of the individuals that was injured in such a big explosion. Has, has, has that been weird, being in the public eye like that? Uh, it has been weird. Definitely going from missionary life to uh, kind of having all the attention focused on, on us as a missionary. You know, we kind of just focus all the attention outward to those around us. And now there's just been so many people coming to us and they've, they've just given us so much help. And it's, it's been awesome. It's, it's a change, that's for sure, but it's, it's also an awesome opportunity to uh, to kind of like share our experiences with these people around us and and to yeah, just I don't know, it's it's been good. Yeah. So you were on the tail end of your mission, nine, a year, nine months. Mm -hmm. Any plans to go back? No. Um, oh yeah, I would have finished in June, and the healing is going to take a good few months. To where um, I'm not going to be able to head out. My mission president came up and visited me twice in the hospital in Brussels, and he um, he kind of shared his gratitude for for my service and for my companion's service, and they they made it clear that you know our missions had come to an end, but we had we'd finished them, and uh, I'm glad to to have finished, and and uh, I'm glad for this opportunity that I have to continue to share my faith to 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 share this hope with other people through these little media stories and, and things like that. You did try to go though, didn't you? You tried to go back, didn't you? Yeah, well, when I first came to the hospital, I, I didn't know how, uh, to what extent my injuries were. And I was hoping that I would just be able to like stay in the hospital for two weeks and then finish out like my last three months. And, uh, but when my parents came and you know, everyone was kind of telling me that like, oh, it's, it's going to take a long time to recover, and so they convinced me. What did your mom say when you tried it, when you said you wanted to go back? She, uh, um, well, it wasn't necessarily that I wanted to go back, but that I wanted to stay out, and I wanted to stay in Brussels in the hospital, and so, you know, they, they had come out, they had come out to Brussels, and they, I think they came out with the intentions, like, oh, we got we got to bring our boy home. And my mom definitely wanted me to come home, but I think even more than her, my dad was wanting to, to get me back to the States to get some, um, some really good health care and things like that. Yeah. So what's next? I mean, you're back home. 
I mean, you had Jimmy John's, obviously, so you're enjoying the <laughs> luxuries of being back in the United States. What's next for you? Um, I think, first of all, just recovering. Um, summer, I'm going to spend lots of time with my family, kind of uh, catch up with them and some friends. And then after that, I think I'm going to start going to school and uh, exploring options of where I want to take my future. Where do you want to go to school? Uh, I think I'm going to go to Dixie State just for one semester, do some generals to figure out what I want to do, and then I'll transfer to a different school if, um, if I decide something else will better fit that. Ben, do you have anything? No, I think we touched on pretty much everything okay. we wanted to. Um, is there anything you want to share? Um, maybe, you know, did you grow up a little bit quicker than you expected to, being over there after the mission and even after this? I mean, anything else you want to share at all? Um, I think the one thing I would like to share with everyone is I would just like to thank everybody, first of all. I know that when the news came out with the attack that everybody was praying for for us and we were in everybody's prayers everyone was there for us and I just want to thank everyone for all their support um, I also just want to kind of just share that um, I know that even though these tragedies happen um, I know that there's good that comes from every little bit of them um, even though it's kind of hard to see sometimes I've I feel like I've been able to f see some good things that have come from these. I feel like the communities come tighter together. I feel like I feel like it's helped strengthen some people's faith to see these stories. And I feel like it's it's good to focus on these good parts. And although there's people who lost their loved ones and and there are people who received really um, serious injuries, uh, I like to focus on the good and to kind of try to have a pos positive outlook on those things.